Welcome back, everyone, to the January 2018 1v1 tournament. I'm your host, Dominic, and we're in the Grand Finals! Starting out Wanderlust, it's gonna be RAR versus 400, competing for first place. And I don't know if there's any prize. There usually isn't. It's just pride, mostly. So they're competing for first place, and the prize of being in first place. And not in second place. So again, Wanderlust is our first map. And that is a map which I really enjoy. It's, it's a map where the amount of spiders we've seen, the spiders we've seen have been a... Okay, seriously, I think clear map marks. Ignore map marks thing. Must change it. Anyway, the... Yeah, this map is a map where spiders are going to be used. We see 400 already going for it. Because of how cliffy it is, it actually really helps. We are going for shield bots, however. Going for a very standard choice, as it were. But I can't say I'm terribly surprised. But, yeah, that is Spiders versus Shields. Pretty pretty okay matchup. I think that Spiders do have a slight disadvantage later on. Early on, it's like with Cloaky. Bandits and Glaives fill roughly the same role. In the mid-game, however, when Outlaws are set up, it becomes very difficult for Spiders to get around. Like, the Fleas are effectively useless at that point. And Venom Redback does okay. Reckless does really well. Although Reckless versus Rogue, I think, is slightly advantageous for Reckless, but only slightly. So yeah, that is going to be interesting. At any rate, though, 400 is starting in the typical way, setting up all your fleas to scout out. Make sure that you know exactly where your opponents are, and if any fleas die, you know where they die, and if they don't die, then you just get free vision, because, I mean, yeah, that's the vision that 400 has right now. So that works really well. RAR, on the other hand, is setting up just expansions. Normally getting going, just along the south side of the map, which admittedly is slower for 400. 400 is having a bit of a harder time setting up their economy. They are getting this expansion, or little, this metal extractor, a little bit earlier than their opponent. But RAR is set up in such a way that they can easily just keep building out. So that works okay. On the other hand, 400 is also going to be losing a lot of fleet. Like, they know where their opponents are, but it's only worked so much. How in the world do I... I think map marks? Ah. I can't remember. There's a thing I can do to turn off map marks entirely. I had it set up to a hotkey. I don't remember what the hotkey is anymore. I changed my hotkeys recently, so... Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, I just did it. Well, it's slash map marks, I guess, is what works. Anyway. So as it is, yeah, 400 is slightly behind RAR economically. They're going to have a bit of a harder time expanding as well. This, this bandit over here to the north side could be a bit of a problem. And at the same time, over... I mean, the Redbacks are going to try to find something, but... Again, RAR is just building defenses. They're setting it up so there's not an easy way for 400 to get in. There really isn't a raider option for for Spiderbot that works in this situation. Especially when you have the Lotus set up, but just in the matchup overall. Mass Flea is not going to do you a whole lot of good, especially, like I said, the Lotuses. And soon for the Outlaws. And as a result, not a whole lot of fast units are going to be available. And that's the thing about playing Spiders, is that you do got to set up a few more static defenses, and you kind of got to know where your opponents are. Like, the big reason why fleas are so important as scouting units is so that you know where your opponents are going, you know where they're going to end up, so you can put your units in place in time because your, your other units are so slow. That's entirely the point. It's also the reason why Reaver has radar. Like, Spiderbot Factory is all about getting a huge amount of information and then using it to position your, your units in the exact right spot at the exact right time. It doesn't have a lot of fast units, it just has a lot of ways of getting knowledge. On the other hand, the Shieldbot Factory has some reasonably fast units. I mean, it's just generally solid units all around. It's very straightforward. So, in terms of play style, it's a little bit harder for 400. But again, this map with the cliffs means that the Spiderbot Factory, the units of the Spiderbot Factory can move anywhere on this map. It can treat it as a flat plane. Whereas everything that RAR is using has these choke points to contend with. Or at the very least, takes a lot longer to get up these hills. And some of them, they can't get up. The ones in the center, that's spiders only. Actually, most of them are spiders only. There's some that bots can do, but... Nope, mostly it's spiders. Ah, wow, that weaver barely is giving. So at least the very least for that weaver, its life will continue, for now. And the south side's still reasonably okay. The problem, of course, is how do you expand from here? Like, 400 doesn't have a whole lot of easy, safe ways to expand. They could take that south side of the map, but again, not a lot of units that can they can escort their workers with, so they're forced to keep these redbacks back, which means they can't apply pressure onto RAR, which means RAR can continue to expand. I mean, 400 knows where the expansions are going, but RAR doesn't have to worry about that. They just they just expand. Like, they know one of the fleas is here. doesn't even care. I mean, eventually, yeah, this this will 
Oh, the lotus can't- it's spotted, but it's so out of line of sight that it can't even be targeted. Huh. Well, at any rate, that's at least something. The flea can get free vision, or free-ish vision. Can it even get free vision? Does it even know? I don't think it knows. No, it doesn't even know. It's not free vision. It's- it is right in the middle of this little alcove. That means it can't see anything, but nothing can shoot it. Oh, nice, though. I do appreciate this. I mean, the, this mass flea for using for use in getting rid of rogues. I mean, considering there are no outlaws, I, expe I expected outlaws because often there are, and if there are outlaws, the fleas have no chance, but there are no outlaws. 400 is cluing in on this and is taking advantage of that fact and being able to set up a bunch of fleas getting rid of the rogues. The downside, of course, being the bandits, which the Redback's not near enough to actually get rid of. But you know, the basic idea is sound. It's just that rogue bandit together then becomes a problem. But that's where Venom Redback comes in and Venom Redback just tears to shreds. And also Rogue in its own, ah, or Flea in its own, rather. Not quite able to get rid of the Convict in time. Another five seconds, it would have been fine. And even then, the Venom Redback coming in here is possibly a problem. Quite probably a problem. It looks like it's not going to be the problem, though. I mean, 400 saying they do need to retreat a little bit. That's the only way they're going to be able to get out of this, but still. The fact is, they do have forces that can push through. Like, this is where Spider becomes strong, is the Venom Redback combo, or Venom Anything combo is a very strong combo. Your opponents basically can't do anything to stop them. Which is really the other thing spiders do. Spiders, they stun, and then win that way. They don't even let you fight back. Although, again, Recluses, there's the Recluse. That's oftentimes what we wait for when it comes to spider bot matchup, is when do the Recluses pop out, and now is the time. No shielded units to fight against, but they're not a bad choice. Right, they will get rid of the rogues, and if the Venoms come in, they'll just tear apart anything that's stunned by the Venom, because of course they will. And if any shielded units do come in, especially when felons start coming on the table, or if you deal with convicts, I mean, you can just tear apart the shields directly, because even though it's got a spread, that spread generally doesn't get too wide, and generally doesn't get wider than the actual range or radius of the shield. So, I realize Wesley Boss is moncasting that, but no, that's... that I, st I still think is legit. I realize Wes, Wes is a better player than I am, but I feel like... There's a lot of situations where it's like, no, the players are doing things that are legit. They might be caught, in, they might be stuck in a corner, and the matchup means they have to do something that seems like memeing. But it's not memeing. It's legit. It's just kind of unfortunately the only option available. But it's a legit option. I mean, also, 0k, the tagline really for 0k should be, no, it's a legit option. Because so often in this game, you can do things that are just kind of weird, and they work. As long as you're as long as you're handling the counters, right? As long as you're, the units you're using can get into range and damage your opponent's units faster than they can get into range and damage yours, then you win. Or at least you win the engagements. And if you can stop your opponents from actually amassing enough of a force in enough of a position to actually deal damage and do stuff, same thing. You still win. Or just dig holes where your units or your opponent's units get stuck in those holes or under your opponent's units. And then you still win. You don't kill anything, but hey, they can't do anything. Those units are just wasted metal now. So no, this game offers enough creativity that I think that it's hard to say that something's memeing. But then again, like Reckless, like I said, it's on the face of it a straightforwardly good option. No. No, it's, this, is, this is good. I would like to see a couple more Venoms and Redbacks. But still, this is a good option, a good position to be in. I mean, right now, 400 is actually not too far behind economically. They are 10 behind, but Flea's managing to get a bunch of naked expansions around the map or at least heavily threaten them, and some of the frontline expansions as well, making that no longer a safe prospect. So overall, this is actually a really nice bit of harassment coming in here from 400. Not enough pressure on Riot to completely give 400 the economic advantage, but it's starting to get there. The only thing I'd like to see 400 do is set up a bit more static defense along the north side so that they don't lose these units again. Because the Bandit could come along here, and there's a Lotus that might stop them, but there's a couple of Metal Extractors they'll grab. They'll stop the Overdrive pretty well. I mean, yeah, the Geo Plant's there, and... I'll grant that this pylon will be able to set up a better overdrive network, and that is helping 400 quite a bit. But really, the, this harassment, that's the main thing. And I think because of that RAR might not be paying attention to the bandit or just using the bandit as a way of checking if an expansion happens rather than harassing themselves, which is fine. That's legitimate. But it also means 400 doesn't have to worry about their own expansions. What they do have to worry about is their ability to actually put in the metal into the factories. They could... Ah, there's this. There, I was about to say, they, they could be pushing in, doing some assist build, and there it is. Weaver's coming in right before 400 starts to excess. There we go. That's like 35 metal per second total coming in there. So, they're good. Well, 32.5, specifically. 
Yeah, the scrap should be up quite quickly. And then once that's up, that's when things will turn around. I mean, as it is, the Reckless are doing a great job turning everything around, making it basically impossible for Rar to hold on to everything they had in the south side of the map. The Crab coming in as well should put the nail in the coffin of the south side expansions. And the Bandit's doing a fine job trying to stop that, but really, as soon as the Venom Redback, if the Venom Redback does pull forward, that'll stop the, the Bandits, and then it'll all be good. And even then, this hill here is giving so much to the Spiders. Now, the Recklesses have been able to take full advantage of that hill, increase their range slightly, increase their, well, everything, really. Like, their range has gone up, their firing speed, I guess, is, well, the firing speed has gone up. Their effective power has gone up. Like, everything's gone up for them. So, yeah, the Reckless on the hill, and also their, their defensive power, that's it. The defensive power is gone up. And also, if you don't believe me that Reckless is good versus shield, watch the game! Except that Venom. That Venom really did not need to die. But yeah, watch the game and how it's progressing. At the very least, Rar isn't doing the thing they need to do to make Reckless's pay, but honestly, I'm not sure what that is. I mean, Mass Bandits, I suppose, would be the option. That's what the Venom Redback was for, but that's why I also said, like, get a couple more Redbacks, a couple Venoms, a couple Redbacks on top of what you have already. Just add that to the force so it's not just Recluse, because that way Bandits can't easily rush in. Yeah. That works pretty well, surprisingly. Or at least surprisingly to Wes, apparently. Or though, no, they're they're still they're still laughing. Actually, I can't tell. I honestly don't know what that emote is. Now it's a laughing emote, but I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like laughing sarcastically or a holy crap that actually is true. That's a thing. But at this point, it is going to be that. Oh, and Rar going for tank factory as well. Going for the emissaries, I guess, to try to punish the crab and punish the recklesses from a distance. That might work, too. These are totally unattended. This, these could actually get locked out here. There's no reinforcements coming in, and these forces, I mean, they aren't really in a position, they aren't in a position to retreat, but they haven't been attended to. They could have gone down. I like the forward push, but the emissary, once it gets in range, that's going to be a problem. Actually, it should be in range right now. Yes, it is. Still, Rar has lost a fair bit in the south side, but there's south side being a problem for 400 as well. Or at least it was a problem for 400, so I guess it's not the worst thing in the world, but Okay, there we go. That's that's what you need. Just get rid of get rid of the forces here. The recklesses are the only thing left. Venom, the redback did go down, but at the very least, the recklesses should be able to tear apart enough that 400 will be distracted. Sorry, Ra will be distracted. The crab over the north side as well, destroying that as best it can. 400 not quite able to reclaim. Actually, no, rebuild. Get all this stuff. Get these metal extractors, please. Send send a weaver down here and take all these metal extractors. Everything here. That would be amazing. You do that and you're good. I don't know why they aren't taking that. I realize it's a little risky, but still, like, ah, no, the commander is doing exactly that. Good, 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 good. Like, I realize it's a little risky, but at the same time, so much pressure is being placed along the south side that I'm not entirely sure that Rar is going to go for it. Actually, north and south side, so much pressure is being split across the map that 400 could probably expand pretty safely over to the south side without Rar easily being able to deal with it, and that's exactly what it seems 400 is thinking. If they get that, they'll have the economic advantage. They have the attrition advantage. And I don't know if they have the army value advantage, but they certainly have pretty good force at this point as far as its overall effectiveness goes. Okay, army value is dead heat. Metal use is actually an advantage of for RAR quite a bit, but that mostly seems to be in defense. Mostly it's their stingers. Yeah, by about a thousand metal, their, their defenses are way stronger. Which again, is something I'm kind of surprised by, because the Spiderbot factory, again, doesn't have easy ways of getting around, but this is mid-game. This is mid-game. Fleas are actually somewhat useful. We aren't seeing outlaws. So, there is the possibility of a decently large chunk of fleas stopping rogues. And the recklesses are doing a great job against the rogues as well. So, again, overall, this is actually working out fine. The only problem might be that, as we get into the later in the game with the tank factor coming in, the emissaries coming in, we could end up seeing a large chunk of minotaurs that are harder to deal with. That and the dirtbags are doing a surprisingly good job making the recklesses pay. So yeah, again, this is where I could see a Venom, a Redback, or some Fleas. Now, that would be helpful, but I still don't really agree with the Dirtbags overall. Again, their their entire gimmick of dropping land and terraforming the ground where they die isn't going to help much against spiders who can just use that as a hill to fire from. But, whatever. At the very least, the north side is basically protected by a giant crab. Gunship plant coming in as well. I'm not sure they're going to build off that. And an air factory on top for RAR... Currently under construction and not much else, so at this point, RAR is kind of banking on their current army holding on, and as I mentioned before, the army value is worse for... Oh no, it's just slightly better for 400. So for RAR, for RAR. 
But now there's the fleas. Nothing can stop them. There's nothing that's going to... No, rogues weren't going to stop them. And they'll certainly stop the rogues and the dirtbag. Yeah, good thing in 400. Quickly switching over to the fleas to make sure that they can tear apart that part of the army. And now it's... Now it's locusts. Now it's the air. Now it's also a bunch of blast wings. Okay, I'm not sure where the best place to go here is. We have the ravens, our razors up already, so Rar's well aware that air is likely a switch. Like, they're just going off meta right now. They know that this is probably going to happen. It's 15 minutes into the game. It should have happened already. And they're just prepared. And they're well prepared, too. Blast wings look like they're coming around the south side of that probably. Ah, they're going into this expansion over here. Gonna see if they, I guess, Rar, I mean, okay, Rar looks like they're going to be attacked from the bottom. 400 is going to sweep in from the bottom and try to take out what they can using that sweep, and then going to the main base from there. I don't expect that to be super successful. I do expect that these metal extractors are going to go down, but I don't expect a whole lot of other damage to be dealt. I mean, it's... Oh, one dirt bag going down, maybe the emissary... Not, not sure. I don't see it. Still, though, that's a bit of pressure. That's good. The north side also being taken. That, I think, is much more important. I think the north side is where things are actually going to matter, especially since the razor on the north side means that air units can't really get there, but the crab's already there. So who cares? The crab will take care of it. Now, the locusts, however, are going along the north side, and that's interesting because... Ah! They do have an option. They can go and avoid the razors getting around the back, and then that's it. The only other anti-air is down here, and that's just a that's just a picket. That's not even a razor. So yeah, these locusts pretty much have free reign. They can easily get around the back and not have any problems. If they do that, from there, it'll just be a matter of taking out as much as they can, doing all the damage possible. Oh, but the raptor's already in position! That's perfect for, for RAR! Rar should be able to avoid too much damage from the Locusts. They will still lose some metal extractors, maybe some defenses. The Locusts are clearly on a suicide mission. If they can get rid of metal extractors... Oh, they get rid of the Geoplant. No, they're not enough damage to the Geoplant. Their DPS is not high enough to get rid of the Geothermal. But if they could... Ah, oh, good timing on the Raptors. Completely stuffing that approach. But still, there's still the Crab to the north, another Crab to the south. And the south side has been taken. As I was saying before, this is what 400 needs to do in order to get the economic advantage, and they have done exactly that, and they have the economic advantage. This is huge. Like, 400's got the economic advantage, they haven't gotten the air much, but they've they've forced so much investment into anti-air that now there's not a whole lot they have to worry about. I mean, they're getting some of their own anti-air with the tridents, but they're more concerned about the economy and about the crabs. The crabs are doing fine. The ground units in general are doing fine. There's not much ground to air right now, and they don't have to worry about air to ground. They have air to air off the tridents, so they can stop the raptors from doing much. And the raptors only can get rid of the gunships, so really, the investment's not in there for the gunships. The 400, they have their tridents just to have some anti-air. But that's fine. I mean, the raptors, as you can clearly see, are having a bit of a trouble with that as they're trying to approach the tridents and dying en masse. I think this is all the raptors. I'm not entirely sure. No, that's it. That is it. This is the only raptor in the game. There will be more built for... Maybe. There might be more build. Not for sure. For maybe. If there are, though, that is huge. And the Tridents definitely doing their job. At this point, we could see a switch over to Rapier or to Locust. And that would be fine. That would probably work. That would probably get rid of the, the Geo in the background. Or the backyard. I keep... Back something. Back line is what I mean. Or backyard in this case is what I mean to say. But, yeah. Get rid of that, low, that get Geo plant. Maybe... Yeah, it's just when you work out how all that's set up, it's like, yeah, this is just gradually grinding in favor of 400. Those early recluses did their job. Oh, Monkus for the shield player. Oh, okay, sorry. Wesley correcting the earlier thing. I wasn't because I thought the Monkus was for the spider player. It's like, that makes sense because it's like, yes, recluses are good against shields, and we saw exactly that as 400 has taken the south side with the recluses. They've really supported the north side. The crabs are obviously the transition, but hey. You need something to transition with, and that's what the recluses do. Now, at this point, the main challenge is, of course, taking out the center. Although 400 has clearly been trying to go around the sides and break, you know, do sneaky assaults, break the back line that way, not so much try to push the center directly. That does give Rar a firebase to move from. They, however, cannot go along this cliff, and 400 can. That's exactly what they're doing, going up the cliff and tearing apart the entire center. This might be game. This approach from 400 might actually take things out. I mean, they take out the stinger here. They got the stinger in the back. There's only one more stinger left. There's not much in the way of defenses. The the non-static approach, the emissaries can't do much. I mean, they can kite, but that's a lot of hermits. I mean, that's, what is it, 20 hermits? Yeah, 18 hermits right at the front. No, this is not going to be easy at all. In fact, this is going to be quite difficult. And there's that center down. 
Center's down. Hermits are up. There's about a dozen of them that should be able to get rid of the emissaries. No problem. Not all. I mean, the bandits there that like, will be a small issue, but it also means the crab can move forward in the meantime. Or can it? No, it can't because it's dead. Never mind. But still, the hermits can do their job. And at the same time, the north crab could theoretically do some more forward assaults. Stopping the razor from existing either. That's not a bad idea. At the same time, though, 400 is not actually building any air forces. They're focused entirely on getting this mass line of hermits coming in here, which I don't totally agree with because that does mean we could see you know, a few rogues set up and that will get rid of the hermits. So this is risky. I would like to see a bit of a change of pace or add some locusts or something. Like get something that allows for some additional firepower along different lines, different properties. Hermits are not the only force you're going to have, but hey, they're doing a pretty decent job on their own. I'll give them that. It's just a matter of whether or not that's actually going to work in practice. The Reckless is up here, and that is still good. Would like to see more of them, though. I do think Recklesses are the way to go. Like, get a few more reckless Recklesses on the field, and that should solve the problem. There's no Raptors up, so again, more Locusts could also do the trick. Ooh. Still, though, it's just a matter of whether or not this is going to work, because the Hermits, Hermits in the South are kind of done. They can't really move forward anymore. They actually have retreated. Try to find another path. That, that's an option. I, I like that idea. But again, it's just because it's all Hermits, Rar at this point knows they can counter that. They know, okay, just build stuff to counter Hermits. Build build Rogues. The Emissaries aren't a bad idea if they're in the right position. You know, and then the Hermits will slowly get worn down. And the economies are very even, so it's not like it's going to be a matter of just out attrition 400 just grinding down Rar with a stronger economy. 400's economy is stronger, but it's not that much stronger a lot of the time. So admittedly, between the Reclaim and the Overdrive, 400 actually is starting to get a terrifyingly strong economy, and their army value is up, and their attrition is about even. It's, it's about even. But still, this is not going to be an easy thing to set up for, or to fight back for Rar, as 400 is pretty well set up. And that is going to be, I think, game. Hard to say. These Hermits, again, could be countered by the sheer number of rogues that have been built. They are up. They are a thing. They do exist. And the Hermits don't seem to care. Now, the Rogues are trying to actually get caught in a bit of a corner here. Force up a slow-moving hill, and that's a problem more for the emissaries than anyone else. Still, I am a bit surprised we aren't seeing anything else. We do have the black, the revenant. Not a bad idea. It could help get rid of this stuff here. But yeah, this is where I think the hermits are going to fall apart. They, they they could go up to the rogues, but the rogues now getting so separated, the hermits can't just push them down. This is the kiting that means the hermits cannot, uh, on their own, win the game. Now, I like the revenant coming in here. That is good. I like that. But at the same time, I still feel like there needs to be more recluses. Don't just go pure Hermit. Like, get some Reckless up. They're not... This isn't like the game on Lonely Oasis. It's not just a matter of just building the one unit type because that's the only thing that'll work. Hermit Spam is not going to work here. That has been countered. That has been thoroughly countered. Honestly, Flea Spam will be the next thing to do because of the sheer number of rogues on the field. Get some Flea Spam going. Get rid of the rogues. Now the Hermits can work again. And then send this two dozen her strong Hermit army back in there. At this point, though, 400 looks like they're just going for the reclaim. They want to get those weavers up. And then from there, they'll have something. But yeah, that's a bit of a shame. Still, though, both commanders are under some threat. I think 400's commander is probably okay, but it's a little hard to say. They're probably fine. Raj's commander, on the other hand, is forced to retreat. And again, the center of the map going down again. The hermits are perfect for dealing with the static defenses. The problem for the hermits is the rogues. And Raj's commander as well. Rar... They have upgraded their commander as they normally do. Beam laser and disruption bomb. But the disruption bomb is still reloading. It's a few seconds left. Still able to get out of the way, though. That's still not a problem. So again, the Hermits... I don't understand the point of the Hermits ban. Okay, Hermit Blastwing might be an option, but I still think that's really risky. I don't agree with it. Like, maybe get some Fleas. Like, alternate Hermits and Fleas, or alternate Hermits and Recluses. That could work. I just don't... I don't know. I mean, I don't know why 400 is going for the exact army composition they're going for, because I don't see it really working. I see it stalling out. On the other hand, RAR... I mean, they have the counter composition to an extent, but... Actually, that's the thing. They have the counter composition. It's not even to an extent. Like, just build something else, 400. I know it's kind of hard. It's easy to get locked in this mindset of, I need to build this one thing. But, no. Like, if 400 were to build a more mixed army, get, like, Half half recluse, half hermit, or even just two thirds hermit, one third recluse, and then that would be fine. That would give them the game. That would, that would four hundred would win at that point. The hermits did a great job breaking the center. The recluses would do a great job breaking the counter force, and mass fleas wouldn't be a bad idea either. And that would be it. 
But I think they're just so focused on getting single type of unit because it's easier to queue up than going for repeat build, which mo a lot of players don't do. And I mean, 400 is no exception. They're not repeat building. I mean, neither do I. I get that. I just tend to go back repeatedly to do it StarCraft style, which admittedly is not what you necessarily want to do. But if you're not going for the repeat build, that is the only other option unless you want to mono spam, which as we see right now is not the best option. Although honestly, mono spam Recluse would actually be fine. We are seeing Strider being built instead, which, okay, fine. That They have the money for that, they could afford that, and a good Scorpion or Dante will break through the lines and become a problem. I think Scorpion more so than Dante. I think the Dante would have the same problem as the Hermits, which is, the rogues are going to counter it, so don't bother. But again, Rar has taken the center of the map again. They've taken the center, they have don't have to worry about any crabs right now, there's no crabs nearby. They don't have to worry about Hermits too much because they have the counter force. And they are going, okay, we are seeing Dante... And again, like, the Blast Wing's not a terrible idea. Like, they are dealing some damage, but it's not enough. I mean, even that, I... I don't know. I don't see the problem with going for Rapiers. Like, I don't... What is 400 doing? Like, Rapiers would work well here. Reckless would work well here. Dante would work okay here. Scorpion would work well here. I guess they must be just kind of tired or locked into this mindset. Like, they have this thing. They have this composition. They want to make it work and just pushing and pushing and pushing. And it's not working. RAR has gotten the counters to it. But that's it. I mean, that's the thing, is that it's just... I don't know. I, I would like to see forces that are actually going to deal with the counter. That's it. That's all I want to see. Is like, if you can deal with the counters, and you can, Reckless will do that, then you're fine. The Raptors are up. There aren't very many of them. So, again, the Tridents would deal with that. But I think at this point, Rar's just going to take it because, honestly, 400 got caught in a mode of thinking that wasn't doing them any good, and Rar caught onto that and has countered it. And nothing has changed that. And Dante, I don't think it's going to change anything either for the simple reason that it's the same kind of assault force as the Hermits are. And the Hermits are countered. I mean, maybe it'll work, but I would be very surprised if it did. And let's just have Reckless, which we don't. We just see Hermits. We just see pure Assault Force coming in here. 400 is clearly locked into a mindset. Does not want to change. That's a bit of a shame, honestly. I would have much preferred to see that go more flexibly. I would have wanted to see 400 actually get an army that's able to counter this, keep their south side of the map, keep their expansions. I mean, their economy at least is reasonably on par with their opponents. They're just throwing in a lot of disposable units and not getting a lot of value off that. So, I just, like I said, I just don't agree. I can kind of see why they went for the Blast Wings. It's a force that doesn't need to worry about staying alive. But Rapiers are kind of hit and run. They'd work. Locusts wouldn't work. Rapiers would work. Hermits are not working anymore. Recluses would work. Or Crab, even. Get another Crab. Why not? I mean, they did a pretty good job keeping their opponents at bay. So, again, get another Crab. Get Recluses. The Dante, not the best idea. I mean, yeah, okay, it's a reasonably decent assault force. And that flank was amazing. I mean, look at that. Like, that line of units is just perfectly set up to be flanked by the Dante there. Nicely done. I don't often see flanks actually work in this game, but there we go. Rar clearly did not have the vision or radar of that top side of the... No, they did. They had vision and radar. I don't know what happened there. But hey, it worked out. Still, the Dante... I mean, that's the Thunderbird. That deals with the Dante. That would deal with the Hermits as well. Would deal with the Recklesses too, but... Nah. Deals with anything. I, mean, I just think the Reckless would be far enough behind, it wouldn't matter so much. But now the forces coming in here might get rid of 400's commander, and I don't think that's the only thing 400 has that they're holding on to to actually win the game. They're holding out hope for. But at the same time, they don't really have a whole lot else that's different. Ah, there we go. Get the Tridents. I was about to say, and you have Tridents, 400. Go and deal with the Thunderbirds that way, and indeed they do. Setting that up to make that a possibility, make that an option, and also probably get that south side again. But the North is not defended either. I mean, that's something Rar could just take. Like I said, 400 has such a huge advantage. Rar has been clawing back the advantage largely because 400 has not changed up what they're building. If that did change, it'd be diff... diff did I just hear a missile? Yes, I did! There's a missile sound on the center of the map! Inferno's being fired out to break the stalemate! Okay, I haven't seen an Inferno... I haven't seen a missile silo built in a high-level game in a good two or three years. But there it is! That's the build power gone. That is the factory setup gone. 400 cannot make anything else work. They, they, they're done. This is it. This is the, this is Rar's approach. I mean, they might lose to the Dantes, but I seriously doubt that. Again, the Dantes are not operating any different way than any of the Hermits. And now, then they can really be built. All the caretakers are gone. The factories are heavily damaged. 
everything, every unit coming out there is coming out on fire. This is just a matter of when RAR decides to push. And RAR doesn't have a huge amount of push options, but again, like they can get rid of the commander with the bombers. There it is, the commander goes down, Forerunner losing their commander, losing their Dante as well, or their first Dante. They have another Dante in the north side of the map, but I think they wanted to have a two-pronged assault with that, and without that, there's not much else. So, I mean, with that, 400 is f way farther behind than they were before. Losing that Geo plant, they have, I think they still have to deal with the Infernos coming in the, from the center, or the Eosis, either way. And that's going to be, very, I, I mean, they have the Geo plant, it's going to go for the Reclaim, or the Reclaim, it's going for the Overdrive when it's done. I mean, that's a thing, sure, I'll give that, but it's just not, yeah, it's going to, that, but yeah, it's the thing, Hermit's, Mass Hermit was not the answer. We are finally seeing Mass Fleas to help deal with the Rogues, but it's too little too late. I mean, it, already so much money has, or so much metal has been burned in forces that are not going to be useful anymore because they're dead. That, yeah, the Fleas are okay, but there's so much defenses up. The Fleas aren't going to get through that. The Stingers are up. The Fleas are not going to get through. The D-Bomb's up. The Disruptor Bomb stops them. I don't know. Reckless's built 10 minutes ago would have given them 400 the game. And they didn't go for that. And Rar basically just trying to convince 400, like, no, you can't win this. Please just let's go on to game two. Because this is this is over. Like we're it's a matter of whether or not 400 can win game two at this point. It's not a matter of whether or not 400 is actually going to be able to win this one. But it very well probably will be because there's no caretakers. There's some storage being built up, but there's no caretakers. There's only like 35 build power in this base. There's a decent amount of overdrive, but not a whole lot of actual metal extractors. And yeah, there's some more. There's more Infernos, just to be sure. Burn the rest of it down, why not? I mean, that's clearly the strategy here, is just burn it all down or blow it up in the case of the EOS being used here. Oh no, that's Inferno, never mind. They found this. Oh no, that's fine, no, the wall here is going to stop any missiles from hitting the advanced Geo plant. So that's something, but still, it's like, yeah, EOS in the Spider Factory. One more of that, and that's it for production. I mean, that should be... That should be game. It should have been game a while ago. We are seeing, though... Last last little push here. Raven's coming in along the north side of the map. Should be able to take out literally everything. Taking out the other Dante. So that's both Dantes down. That's Hermes down. That's nothing left. There's no money left. 400 cannot rebuild that. Going for the Cloaky Factory despite this, but even then, it's not going to happen. Strider Hub just got Eost. And the Cloaky Hub, it's not been spotted yet, but I mean, the Ravens, once they see it, they're going to take it out. Like this thing, we have Ravens on the field that are doing a great deal of damage and that are not being stopped by anything. Really, there's not a whole lot threatening things. These torches are about to go down. Torches have a... No, they don't have that big of an explosion radius. They are going to go down, though. Not sure of this one, but probably the next one, if not that one. But yeah, RAR just... They've got this in the bag. They just need to actually push. I mean, 400... It was really good, though. Like, 400 did have a great start. They had a great position to work from. It's just that they didn't have anything beyond that because, ultimately, they got stuck in monospam. Their, their brain got stuck in monospam. And when they didn't have monospam... Well, they had monospam reckless briefly... I think that's the thing, is that they had the mono spam, and that... Uh, RAR the entire time has had this repeat build of a variety of units. Rogue, Bandit, sometime Vandal. They made sure they had a reasonably diverse army. We didn't see Outlaws, but we didn't see a lot of Fleas either. <laughs> wow, RAR! BMGG there! Throwing in the GG for their opponents, but yeah, that's... Oh, right, that was for their opponents, right? Yeah, that totally was. 400 throwing in the towel. I mean, ah, man, that was close. Even then, the metal income was really, really close. The very end, the excess got ridiculous, but still. Metal income was close. Army value was ahead for 400 for so much of the game. Even near the end, too. Started to get close to the Dantes. Although, again, that's... The graph is misleading because those are the two Dantes and they weren't going to do much. But here, yeah, this was the place where 400 could have leveraged a win. Like they got rid of the center expansion. Like when they got rid of the center expansion, they'd gone from breaking that center expansion to switching over to recluses, having Hermit Recluse continue the march into Rar's base. That would have been game. Hermit Recluse, maybe some red... Like Hermit Recluse with a couple of redbacks would have won them the game. But instead, they just went pure Hermit. And then the gunship plan didn't do anything, despite the fact that they got rid of all the raptors. They could have built up a bunch of rapiers, and that would have taken the place of redbacks as well. And that would have also forced more anti-air, which would have forced a less co coordinated anti-ground force which would have meant the hermits and recluses would have had an, or yeah hermits and recluses would have had an even easier time pushing into the main base and that would have been game at this point though that is game one rar taking it it's still best of three though so we aren't done yet it's just a matter of whether or not this 
is going to continue, or 400 continues to go for the mono spam, because I think Rar is expecting that now. And I don't think that was a conditioning play. I don't think that was 400 trying to convince Rar that it's all mono spam all day, and then next map, 400 deciding to go, no, I will go for a wide variety of units. I'll go for all the units. I'll build a limpet. I'll, okay, if we go for, if they go for Amphib, obviously. I'll build a Jin. I don't know. There's a lot of units in the game that people don't usually build. But even then, it's still like, I don't expect that to happen. I'm pretty sure that was just 400 being 400. Because 400 was not really thinking in terms of anything super flexible. So yeah, I just, I don't know. I mean, I want to see 400 played a little bit more flexibly. But I'm not sure how well that's going to work. I think 400 is going to have to... You're getting, oh, they don't like any of the maps. Interesting. I mean, I guess for the style of play they seem to be trying to go for, eh, not really a whole lot works well. Living Lands might work well, actually. Or Comic Catcher. Mono Spam Ravagers works really well in Comic Catcher. But, otherwise, I don't know. Oh, Living Lands. Okay. We are going to see Living Lands. Again, that's a map I think might work, maybe. Oh, I don't know. It's so small that I could see maybe like Monospam Glaives. I think that might be what they're thinking, is Monospam Glaives getting in there, doing a bunch of damage early on, or Monospam Bandits, getting a bunch of damage early on, and then not having to worry about playing the late phase. But it's, yeah, it's just a question of whether or not that's actually going to work out. Because I seriously doubt it, honestly. I'm, I'm, I'm not sure. I think 400 is going to have to change their entire approach. They're going to have to be a bit more flexible about army compositions. That should work, then. Anyway, we are going to be getting going on to game two. And that is going to be on Living Lands. As we progress to the tournament. Possibly to the last game of the tournament. It's not sure because, again, this is 1-0 for RAR. If RAR wins this, they win the tournament. And then if 400 wins this, then we move on to game 3, and it's RAR's choice of map. Although it occurs to me that small maps like this are actually really good for RAR. At least if they try to go for the commander style play. They might even do that, actually. They might even go for a, a commander rush, because they're one game ahead. They don't have much to worry about. They almost well, might as well try to close it out. They've just been playing for half an hour straight in a really grindy macro game. I'm sure they'd rather not play another grindy macro game. It's just tiring. Anyway, we're waiting for Rar to get back here at any rate. And that's... Yeah, I just... I can see Rar doing that. It's a thing they have in their back pocket. They haven't done it much recently. That was the way they played before. Like, way back when. They'd always do that. Every time. Now, they don't do it so much, but I think... I think they could pull it out just to be kind of cheeky. I could see it. It'd be pretty amusing if they did that. But yeah, it's like, you know, you you pull out that commander, you pull out a couple of uh, thugs or a couple of reavers, and just push in with a level 4 commander and two or three reavers. I could see it. 400 hover going for Cloakabot Factory, which is not surprising. But on the other hand, I don't know, Rar, what are they doing? I haven't really decided yet. But yeah, 400 on there. Rar also going for Cloakabot. We could very well see Reaver Rush, a commander, a Reaver supported commander rush coming in just a second. Eh, so let's see here. Rar going for the strike commander. Could very well be it. No, Rar going for an early clo Cloakabot. 400. They're the ones going for the Reaver Rush. Okay, Rar actually trying to play the long game. They're, they don't even want to go for the commander cheese. They're just trying to play the safe long game. 400 going for that cheese from the position of disadvantage. Still going for it. I don't know why, but I guess they're also tired of the long game. Just want to get it done quick. Like I said, I figured you know, they probably would go for a rush. And indeed they are. Going for a Reaver rush. I mean, that is that is a dank meme for sure. No, they're going for the Reaver rush. Rar doesn't have anything set up to deal with that. They will spot it with the Glaze before it comes in. But and the question is, are they going to build the Ronin in time? Now, granted, Rar is going to have a much stronger economy than 400. Like, if 400 used their starting economy to build up the Reavers, they don't have much left to build up their actual economy going forward. So, they're not in the best of positions. If these Reavers don't do their job, that's going to be it. 400 will lose. But if the Reavers do their job and the Glaives won't stop them, that actually is potentially a way of getting into game three. I just don't know. I mean, that's the thing with rushes. You never really know until it happens. Until it, once, it, once it happens, then you know what's going on. The only downside is that the both Reavers are up front. 400's commander is not in a position where they can easily defend against a large number of Glaives. Small number of Glaives, fine. That's fine. 
But Rar, they're being sneaky, going around the back, getting, getting metal extractors. I wonder if they're figuring what's going on. Like they figure, you know, there's nothing here. There's no glaives here. I don't have any glaives in my base. What's happening? There's got to be something weird happening. And they're going for Reavers themselves. So they're going to at least have defenses of an even nature, while at the same time taking on the main factor, because there's nothing in the back line defending it, because both Reavers are in the front line, and they really can't go back. They can't move fast enough to go back. Rar's command is being built up. They got the Reavers as well. I think Rar was doing the exact same thing, but they were playing it safe. Getting their economy built up first, getting some raiding, going po poking and prodding just to find the openings before going in hard. Before getting their own Reavers and doing a Reaver-supported commander push. And now 400 doesn't have anything. The Reavers are going to go down without taking out anything. One's down right. The second one's going to go down right afterwards. Rar has no threats right now as they were able to build up their own Reaver push in the time it took 400 to, ru to do the rush. And that is going to be game. 400 really, like... They went for the economy after they didn't just push the commander forward and just go all in. I don't know if it would have worked better had they gone all in, but it certainly worked a lot worse that they didn't. So now at this point, Rar can do the same thing. But they have a commander, they have the Reavers, they have a couple of glaives that are able to expand that are able to stop expansions. And they've also been able to harass 400 in the meantime. And they have a reasonably strong economy that doesn't require them to have basically sacrificed a bunch of stuff. Because both Reavers were lost for basically nothing. And these glaives, on the other hand, are doing a great job. Just doing a f they, they got rid of the Conjurer, too, so this entire expansion is done. They're, like, 400 cannot expand to the southeast side of the map. I mean, 400 could theoretically claw their way back in here. They went for some Ronin, realizing that the Reavers are on their way. I mean, they, they know. But Rar, again, they're playing it safe. They know that they have the advantage. They don't have to push hard. They just have to go and then make sure to maintain the pressure and not die. As long as they maintain the pressure and don't die, they're good. If they don't maintain the pressure, then they're not good, obviously. But again, they have the economic advantage. They have a stronger army to work with. They have the counter to all these glaives running around the map. Granted, the said counter is at the middle of the map, but still, they could build more reavers, no problem. And indeed, they are. Just getting a couple more of those just for defense, because I'm sure they're well aware. I think they actually have radar over this, now that I think about it. No, they don't. They are guessing well, though. No, they, no, they did. They did. They, did. they don't have radar, but they saw the glaives coming in with their own glaive. They were fighting them already. So they know what's going on. Hence the reavers coming in here, and hence the reaver on the north side being used for defense. Because Rar is playing this smart. I like that. 400, I think, is recovering reasonably well from that early rush. Like, they didn't go all in, so they haven't lost everything yet, but still, the, it's still taking them a little while to build up. Rar, on the other hand, they have the center fairly well built up. They've got it reasonably well defended. They have had these glaives completely unable to do anything, thanks to the commander and that beam tower. So, at this point, really the only threat, I'd say, is that Ronan are coming in from 400. 400 has gone for some pretty good unit counters here. They are going to probably monospam a little bit, but no, no, no. Ronin and Glaive, good mix. They get that set up, and then from there, they can deal with the Reavers. So there's that. Good unit counters from 400, but again, Rar's got a better position, got better economy, got a safer setup overall. I'm... I'm not sure, really. I, I just don't see how this is going to work other than Rar slowly creeping in. But hey, that's the Ronin of 4 is stopping exactly that. Commander coming in, however, with the beam laser, and not sure what it's going to get on level 3. That'll probably be a disruptor bomb. Common choice for the level 3 D-gun build, but I don't know. I'm assuming they're also going for the D-gun option. But yeah, the disruptor bomb would do a great trick against these Ronin. That would make it a lot easier for the Reavers to get in there, and then the Reavers could get rid of them, and that would basically do it. Killing off the Ronin. But we'll find out in a couple seconds. In the meantime, though, Still more Reavers. Rar going for a lot of Reavers against Ronin. Reavers into Ronin. I can't say I agree with this, but it is a bold strategy. And no, just two beam lasers. Not even going for a D-gun option. Just double beam laser. And extra... Oh, a lot of extra range. 453, that actually does... Oh, it's even range. That is equal to the Ronin range. Very cleverly done, Rar. Don't go, don't go for the super tricky D-gun. Just go for the basics. Go for the thing that means the Ronin cannot outrange you. And now the commander can just rush in. Hence the Reavers. That makes a lot of sense now. The Reavers don't have to worry about it because the commander can get rid of the Ronin. The Reavers can just walk in, or, you know, ambush properly. And that's it. I mean, 400, they have the slings, which is not a bad idea, but those those fire kind of slowly. I I don't know. I'd almost say knights would be the better option just because they have a lot of HP and they could stun out the... Ra or actually, knights or phantoms. Actually, the amount of money that 400 has... Mm, that's a tricky call. I'd say I'd say knights definitely with the amount of money they have, or a tick. Sorry, an imp. A couple imps. Maybe. Now nah, imps would be tricky at this point. It's too late for imps. But I could see a knight maybe working a sling is an interesting idea. Like I said, but Rar's commander is probably going to be too mobile for that. 
And also, probably a little bit... Oh, no, never mind. This actually a, could work. Well, okay, maybe not. It's That's hard to say, because right now, Rar's commander is still putting a lot of work in here. The Reavers just need to move forward. The Reavers and Glaives just need to move forward. There's nothing that's going to stop them. Like, 400's commander does have nothing. It has the basic rifle. That's it! Rar's commander should be able to take out everything here. Factor's going down. The Sling's going down. The reigning Slings can't really do too much. There's the Glaives coming in here. Really going for it. Foreigner's going to lose their commander. Foreigner's going to lose everything. Now, they lose the commander, lose the base, and probably lose the tournament. Well, not probably. And lose the tournament. If they lose those first two things, they're definitely out of the tournament. And as a result, that is Rar taking first place. Foreigner's commander's down. And that's got to be game. And indeed it is. There's Foreigner throwing in the towel. Rar, congratulations. Winning first place in the June 2018 OMV1 0K tournament. 400 taking silver medal. And FFC, we can't forget them, taking bronze with Unlucky, one of the newest players in this tournament, taking a very... Yeah, they first logged in 48 days ago. They're not even two months into this game. Taking fourth place in the tournament with pretty much the opposite approach to 400, which was being very flexible. A building whatever units were necessary for what would actually get them in. So yeah, well done to all of you, and thanks for... Nice for playing, everyone. Thank you to Aquanim for hosting. And to everyone watching, thank you for watching. Have a good night.